me clearly, America is not a racist country. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, this is another exoneration story, but it also have a very sad ending. So this is Leonard Allen Cure. He was 53 years old. He spent 16 years behind bars for a crime that he never committed. These people got hell to pay. And these are the things that are completely unforgivable. You should never, ever forgive people that put you behind bars for decades and then set you free. You should never forgive that. So the sad part is he has been shot to death by the Georgia police. Ugh. Georgia police officers shoot and kills man who was wrongly imprisoned for 16 years. Police in Georgia have shot and killed a man who spent 16 years in prison for a wrongful conviction. Leonard Allen Cure, 53, died on Monday after a police deputy pulled him over as he drove along I-95 near the Georgia-Florida line, authority said. Mr. Cure was previously, he was sentenced to life in prison back in 2003 for an armed robbery of a drugstore in Florida. He had prior convictions for robberies and other crimes. He was released in April of 2020 after a judge ruled that Mr. Cure had solid alibis that were previously discarded. You know, it's just them. See, they are born and raised on ignoring us. And if you notice, when it comes down to racism, that's what they want us to do. You listen to the messages that come from them. Oh, somebody said something racist and hurtful to you. Just ignore that. Just ignore them. Just ignore, uh, just ignore it. You know, it, because that's how they're raised. They're raised on ignoring anything that they don't like. If I don't like it, I ignore it. That's how they're raised. And they literally have those same expectations for us. I wasn't raised like that, and I'm certainly not going along with it. So anyway, there was physical evidence that ruled him out from the crime. And they discarded it and put this man at a scene that he was never in and then jailed him for the rest of his life. And then he just got out of prison from being exonerated in 2020. GBI said Mr. Cure was killed at around 7.30 a.m. on Monday after he got out of his car at the deputy's request and complied with the officer's demand until learning he was under arrest. So he wasn't putting up any fight. He was cooperating all the way. The deputy tasered Mr. Cure, who then assaulted the deputy. Well, he was probably at that point trying to defend himself. If this man was complying and going along with everything and doing what he was told, then there was no need to pull out a taser. So I ain't mad at his reaction at all. I'm not mad at his reaction. So he only reacted after he was tasered, but according to this, he was complying and doing everything they told him to do. So the deputy, then when he fought back, 
he pulled out a gun and shot Mr. Cure as he, you know, still did not comply, the GBI said. Okay, so at one point in the story, you said he was complying. And then after he got tasered and he fought back, then he was not complying. These people are full of crap. How the hell did these people get in charge of anything? So anyway, emergency services treated Mr. Cure, but he later died. The Bureau did not say what prompted the deputy to pull him over in the first place. And American cops are notorious for pulling you over for no reason. They are notorious for that. So anyway, they said they don't still know why he was pulled over. So a nonprofit group, the Innocent Project of Florida represented Cure in his exoneration case. Its executive director, Seth Miller, said after speaking to Cure's family, I can only imagine what it's like to know your son is innocent and watch him be sentenced to life in jail, to be exonerated and then be told that once he'd been free, he's been shot dead. Earlier this year, Mr. Cure, who lived in the suburbs of Atlanta, was given $817,000 in compensation for his wrongful conviction. That ain't enough. 16 years and he got under a million dollars? Nah, that was not enough money. Brower State Attorney Harold F. Pryor, who described the 53-year-old as a smart, funny, and kind a man, said at the time, no amount of money will get those years back from Mr. Cure or give him peace. But it is a small gesture that recognizes Mr. Cure was wronged and that we in the state of Florida and the justice system will help him and compensate him with $817,000 for 16 years of his life that he can never get back. Y'all suck. So anyway, after he was freed and exonerated by our office, he visited prosecutors at our office and participated in training to help our staff do their job in the fairest, most thorough possible way. Brower Assistant Attorney General Ariel Demby Berger added, I've gotten to know Mr. Cure Lenny these past years, and he has encouraged our work as well as help us train future generations of prosecutors. I sure hope you paid this man for his time because y'all are the kind of people that are always looking for a damn freebie. So Lenny has shared with me that his dream was one day to work in a cubicle instead of doing manual labor. Now Lenny can go to college and surpass his dream. So GBI says it's conducting an independent investigation into the shooting. It looks like to me, y'all, that this man didn't do anything wrong up until the point he was tasered. And let's face it, anybody that is cooperating with the police and then they out of nowhere pull a taser out and tase you anyway, anybody would be upset about that. You know, and the fact that they say they got to investigate it, they know what this deputy did was wrong. He was not under any threat. Oh, boy. This is horrible. Horrible. You know, and it is just a reminder that there are so many within our community that have gone through some pretty horrific things in a system that cares absolutely nothing about us at all. If they cared, they would never keep you locked up that amount of times for something that never happened or something you were never involved in. 
maybe it did happen, but they certainly didn't have the right person. And remember, they had evidence. It tells you right here, they had physical evidence that proved his alibi and the physical evidence that he never committed the crime. They had it and they discarded it. Because they're, they're taught and trained to ignore us or always assume when we're telling them something, we just, we're just lying about the whole thing. They're, they're taught and raised to do that. So what a tragic way this man had to live his existence. And it's not all to his own doing. This systemic racist system did a lot of it and had a lot to do with it too. Y'all tell me what you think about this story. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.